G'day everyone, it's Bruce here again. Just going to do a bit of a talk on fitting rings to pistons on the Suzuki um, one litre motor. And we start off with the bottom ring, the oil ring. Start off with the expander first. Um, we want to end up, you normally end up with the rings ring in gaps towards the gudgeon pin, but one one way, one the other way, one the other way as you go up the, up the piston. So we start off with drop, drop our expander in, making sure we don't twist it up or damage it and put it in about the centre. Then we go for one of our scraper rings, stuck together a bit here, the colours. Alright then we can either either go on the top side or the bottom side, but we'll go on the bottom side. I've still got two there. Yeah, there we are, stuck together. They're only that skinny. Alright then, so we're gonna try and hold that back out a little bit. So that we've got something for it to run into. We're gonna go over the top. Work our way around. Back to there. Let me just check that that's free and it's not seized up. Move the next one. This will be easier. They get easier from now on. We'll just come around here. And we're going to place it. We'll try not to overstress them. We'll just push them down. Just click them down. We've got them like that. Then. The real check is that that's free on there. Ring grooves are nicely cleaned out, as you can see. You've got to clean the corners out, which are pretty hard. So, we're going to have our expander about here. And then we're going to have bottom scraper here, next scraper here. Then we go up to our second ring, which is a cast iron ring. We have a look end on to see it's not tapered on the inside or the outside. There's a couple of different ways we can put them on. This is this is one way. We just sit the gap there like that. And we just very carefully push them around. Bit here, bit there, quite easy because only little little pistons. And we can just push him straight onto the second ring in one go. There again we can just check whether hold down a bit of pressure just check whether the ring is running right into the corners of the groove that just double checks that it is clean too if you do that and then we go for our top ring this is more of a chrome top ring so we have a look on here to see if we have any dots or chamfers no dots no chamfers um, if it has an inward chamfer the chamfer goes up if it has an outward chamfer on the edge that goes down if it has a dot about here somewhere. Dots overpower um, all other markings or other types of rings. So we can do another, we can put on another way if you want to. We can go this way and sort of peel the ring on if you're watching me. That's another way you can put them on. Different people like to do it different ways. Just click that into there and click that into there. Ring in uh, the, the grooves are in fairly good condition. Um, if the top ring groove in the piston is really worn, uh, the rings probably won't last long because they'll, they'll be break. You just run that around in there tightly, pushing downwards, just to check that all the carbon is cut out of the corners of the ring groove. Yeah, it looks to be running around there pretty well. Right then, so we've got that done. And um, when we come to fit them into the motor, we'll probably come back here and we'll probably place probably that about there, so we've got gap, gap, our joint is going to be in about the middle there, then we'll probably come around here, and we'll probably get our second ring gap pretty well opposite the pin, we might get around that way a bit just to be better to be closer to the pin than further away, and the top one is going to be the other side, and um, if that one's got the gap there, we can go straight across and put the other gap on the other one about there. And that's about how they'll be set up. Some engines they like to have, um, some engines they'll specify that the top ring end gap is towards the intake valve. Uh, I don't know whether it makes any difference. 
and who knows, after they've been run for a couple of couple of thousand kilometres, we don't know whether they're still going to be in the same position or where they're going to move around. There's another way here we can uh, put these rings on quite easily, especially if you feel like you, you might break them or whatever, trying to put them on. There's another way we can do it with ring pliers. That's all they look like, quite a simple thing. And they'll work on different thickness rings. And we just put that in there, we just put our thumb on the back of it there and just try and spread the ring out. It's actually harder with small rings than what it is with big rings. We just expand that out a little bit more. Get them over on top of the piston like that and just push them down. That's with ring pliers. It could have went a little bit easier, but there we are. Now they're in there. It's always a good idea when they're back on there. I've said this before. Just to give them a turn, make sure they are going fully into the full depth of the ring groove and everything is clean. Get both ring end gaps there if you like that. Hold down on them a bit. Go and just give that a bit of a shave. Make sure it's clean. If you want to later on, you can get compressed air and just give them a shot of air down where the joins are. So make sure everything's nice and free. Ordering's got to be free. Then we'll space them, stagger them, and then uh, we'll fit the big end bearings into the rod. Once we get the big end bearings fitted to the, the rods, then we'll oil them, then we'll turn them, make sure the oil goes all the way round down into the grooves. And then um, we're pretty right to put the ring compressor on and press the rings and then fit the pistons to the cylinders. I'm going to do another video showing how to uh, fit the pistons to the engine. Thanks for watching.